I am on the battlefield for my Lord. You know, I, I promise him that I, Lord, I'll serve you until I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yeah, I am on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. You know, I was alone and I know. And I was a sinner too. But I heard a voice from heaven. I've got work for you. I took my master's hand yes I did and I joined the Christian band and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord yes I am well I am on the battlefield for my Lord for my Lord I am on the battlefield for my Lord, oh yes I am. You know, I promised him that I, I would serve him until I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I need to know, are you a soldier? In the army of the Lord, are you a soldier? In the army, are you a soldier? In the army of the Lord, are you a soldier? In the army, are you a soldier? In the army of the Lord, are you a soldier? In the army, are you a soldier? In the army of the Lord, are you a soldier? In the army, oh, I believe I testify. In the army of the Lord, oh, I believe I testify. In the army, oh, I believe I testify. In the army of the Lord, oh, I believe I testify. In the army, oh, I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier. In the army, oh, I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord, oh, I'm a soldier. In the army, you know, I got my war clothes on. In the army of the Lord, oh, I got my war clothes on. In the army, well, I got my war clothes on. In the army of the Lord, oh, I got my war clothes on. In the army, oh, I believe I'll be a witness. In the army of the Lord, oh, I believe I'll be a witness. In the army, oh, I believe I'll be a witness. In the army of the Lord, oh, I believe I'll be a witness. In the army, oh, I'm a soldier. The army of the Lord, I'm a soldier. In the army, I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier. In the army. I just want to say thank you thank you Lord I thank you
thank, thank you. I thank you, Lord. Yes, I do, Lord. I, I just want to say thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I, I thank you. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you've been, you've been so, you've been so good to me, Lord. Yes, you have. You've been so, so good, yeah. Yeah, you've been so, so good. Yes, you have, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Ale, alleluia. Ale, alleluia. Ale, ale, alleluia. 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 Hallelujah is the highest praise. Give God a hand of praise on this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes, sir. Let us rejoice and be what? Glad. Glad in it. And let the redeemer of the Lord do what? And let everything that have breath do what? Praise. Give God another big hand of praise this morning. Give God the praise. Thank God for Reverend Dr. Jack said. Feeling better on this morning. Amen. He's with us for two services. Thank God for our tech staff. That's Stinson and Hudson. Thank God, sister. Uh, Robbie and the ushers, you're all in good form, and thank God for Taylor and GQ and all the, the stewards and everybody, amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is blessing when? He's blessing right now. If he woke you up this morning, he blessed you already, amen. He's been good already, amen. Many folks would love to be here on this day, beloved. We pass by many hospital rooms and we hear about all the sicknesses going on, but by God's grace, we are here and we are doing well. Hallelujah. And thank God to see Reverend Dr. Haynes. Y'all give her a hand clap too. Amen. <laughs> always supportive, always helping. Beloved, let me call your attention to Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse number 2. And it's amazing, this three chapters but it's so powerful and so relevant for today's world that we're living in. Only God could do that. 
Zephaniah could speak to his time to Jerusalem and yet at the same time tell us about the future great tribulation yet to come. As we open God's word, let us bow for a word of prayer. Oh, thank you, Lord. And as the song said, hallelujah, being the highest praise, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We all need a touch from you, Lord God. We all need you to speak to us. We all need for you to touch us. We have many prayers and many desires, many requests and many situations, many circumstances. Many need comforting on this morning, Lord, comforting by the power of the Spirit. Many need help, finances, and some in the home, and some with doctor's report and health and bodies, healing, Lord. We recognize we can receive all that right here as we hear the word of God, Lord. Oh, Lord, hear us and answer us and touch us and bless us. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the blessings of Abraham through Jesus Christ for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. We say, amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, let us look at Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse number 2. The Bible says, she obeyed not the voice. And God is talking to Jerusalem. <laughs> she received not correction. This is the capital city. She trusted not in the Lord. That's a bad thing. <laughs> she drew not near to her God. Not somebody else's God. <laughs> That's her God. Amen. We give honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. And thank God for the testimony that he hung, bled, and died. But on the third day, third day, y'all, he got up from the grave. And that's why we're here this morning. We want to use as a subject title on this morning, To Whom Much Is Given, Much Is Required. Am I right about it? Yeah. Zephaniah returned in his message to the punishment of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We look back in chapter 1, God dealt with the punishment of the nations. But now in chapter 3, he returns to the punishment of Jerusalem again to his own people. Judgment begins at the household of the Lord. Why? Because to whom much is given, much is required by God. Can I go there this morning? The Apostle Paul lets us know that God gave a whole lot to Israel. And I love how he points it out point by point by point, all the things that he gave to them. Can I back it up this morning? Beloved, you look at Romans chapter 9 and verses 4 and 5. The Bible says, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory? All the things he gave them. And the covenants. Look at that S on covenants. And the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. And the service of God. And the promises. Y'all see that S on promises. They got a whole lot. Whose are the fathers? Which means Abraham, Isaac, Jacob came from them. And of whom as concerning the flesh... Christ came. Does your Bible say that? Does your Bible say that? Christ came, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. 
Doesn't that sound like a lot? God gave Israel more, therefore he expected more from them. They were highly favored. Highly privileged. God expected because he gave them so much for them to have greater faith in him than all the other nations of the world. The other nations did not receive the law from Mount Sinai, but Israel received the law from Mount Sinai. So God said, because I gave you much, I expect much from you. That's the principle right there. God expects greater obedience out of them because he gave them the law and gave them covenants, gave them special revelation, gave them promises, and then he did many miracles for them. Oh, when they were in Egypt, he performed 10 miracles to bring them out of Egypt. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, to whom much is given, much is required. God says this morning, I got a case against you. I'm going to take you to court. I'm accusing you of rebellion. I'm accusing you of pollution. And I'm accusing you of oppression. Can I back it up this morning? Beloved, if you look with me at Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 and look a little deeper, look a little closer. The Bible says, woe to the city of oppressors. Y'all see the oppressors right there? Somebody say oppressors. Rebellious. It's bad when God calls you rebellious. Somebody shout rebellious. Rebellious and defiled. She obeys no one. She accepts no correction. She got an attitude, don't she? <laughs> she attitude problem, you're right. She does not trust in the Lord. And always keep back in your mind, he gave, he gave her all this. I'm talking about Jerusalem. I gave you all this and look how you turned out. She does not draw near to her God. God is telling Jerusalem, you are rebellious because you refuse to submit to my will. God calls her polluted because no matter how many prophets he sent, she still want to continue in sin. How many of you know that there's some folks out there who are hard-headed? Hmm. And then she had nerve to be oppressive. She, she oppressed the widows. She oppressed the orphans. She oppressed the poor. She, she took advantage of them. But, but she should have known that, that God protects the poor. One author said that God Lord loves poor folks because he made so many of them. Amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> I said, that's deep, amen. <laughs> God has an indictment against Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is in court, and, and God is telling Jerusalem a principle that to whom much is given, much is expected. And then he says, woe to them. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, you are a city of of oppressors. The Bible says in Psalms 15 and verse number 5, the, the Bible says, he that putteth not out his money to usury, this is the, the, the righteous person, come on, nor taketh reward against the innocent. This is what God wanted from them, but they did not do. Hallelujah. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Can I go there this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. They, they oppress other folks and they should have known 
better. Ooh, they were rebellious against their own God. Somebody say rebellious this morning. <laughs> and then thirdly, God says, you're religiously defiled because you won't obey the law. And then when I sent you prophets, you killed the prophets instead of obeying the prophets. Can I go there this morning? They were disobedient big time. And sometimes I look around in this world and, and I see what's going on today. And I can't believe what I see with my own eyes. But there's disobedience big time. Hallelujah. Why is this going on? Because people are not putting their trust in their Lord. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, they're not drawing near to God to fellowship with God. Can I go there? Yeah, they're not obeying the word of God. They're not acting on the word of God. Some folks know the word, but they won't obey the word. Uh, well, God has a case against Jerusalem, and, and then he breaks it down that the problem is in the leadership. Oh, let me go there. It's bad when you have bad leaders. Uh, bad leaders make bad folks. Because folks don't know right from wrong. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Beloved, if you go to Zephaniah chapter 3 and look at verses 3 and 4, God denounces these leaders and he, he pronounces the things that they have done wrong. Can I go there this morning? Uh, he says, her princes within her are roaring lions. Somebody said that ain't good, amen. <laughs> her judges are evening wolves. They gnaw not the bones till the morrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. Can I go there? They have done violence to the law. Tell your neighbor, those are some poor leaders, amen. The breakdown was in the leadership. So often when a nation goes astray, when you go in there and find out the problem, the problem is with the leadership. Can I go there this morning? When the leaders go wrong, the people go wrong. Can I go there this morning? God mentions four classes of leader. He mentions the princes, the judges, and the prophets, and the priests. And these respected leaders weren't leading the, the people correctly. Can I break it down this morning? Well, first, he dealt with God called out the princes, the royal leaders. They should have represented justice and equity and fairness. But instead, they represented greed and avarice, selfishness, which means they were in it for themselves. Mm, God says you're like lions, you're like ravenous beast you you take advantage of the people and and it's bad to have leaders who are in it for themselves and that they don't care about the people all they think about is flourishing themselves uh, then after god deals with the princes then he goes on down and deals with the judges the judges are the rulers Today, we would call them civil magistrates who should have set an example for the people of being godly and being faithful and administrating justice. But instead of praying, they were predators. They preyed upon the people like ravenous beasts. They took advantage of them and, and justice was denied. How many know that Sometimes in the United States, justice is denied. <laughs> it's more than sometimes. Sometimes a whole lot of times. But, the, but Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. 
What's going on today went on before. Uh, can I go a little further? God points out not only the princes, hallelujah, he says also the prophets. Oh, he says your prophets, the one that I sent, they're treacherous. They got out there and got arrogant. <laughs> they got boastful. Uh, they became unfaithful to the God who sent them. The prophets were unfaithful to the word of God. Instead of telling the people what thus saith the Lord, they started telling the people what they wanted to hear. How many of those folks got itching ears sometimes? Yes, they, they, they want to hear the things that make them feel good. They don't want you to tell them the truth. They want you to tell them how they can get rich. Amen. How they have a good vacation. Amen. Can I go there this morning? They don't want to hear what thus saith the Lord. They don't want to hear what the Bible says. When you hear from God, that means you hear from the Bible. Amen. Can I go there this morning? Oh, many folks are proclaiming what God has not said. Can I go there? Uh, folks now don't want to make people uncomfortable. <laughs> they don't want to talk about sin. Uh, they don't want to talk about judgment. Oh, they showed up, don't want to talk about hell. <laughs> Can I go there? They don't want to talk about damnation. And they don't want to talk about the day of the Lord. And they don't want to talk about the things that God has in his word because they have itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. But how many know that God wants us to hear what thus saith the Lord? All right. Somebody say amen this morning. Then the last category God pronounces against, God talks against the priests. Somebody said the priests. Yeah, these were the religious leaders. Come on, somebody. That were profaning the house of the Lord. That were violating the law. They had no respect for the house of God. How many of there are folks sometimes who don't even have respect for the house of God? Uh, am I right about this morning? I was sharing this morning that folks will even steal rose bushes from a church. <laughs> I never thought I'd come to that day, amen, where you got to lock up things at the church. Can I go there? When I was growing up, even the wine old had respect for the church. He knew to take his hat off when he got in the church. Am I right about this morning? But God says, your own priests, they don't have any respect for the house of God. They're, they're defiling the temple. They're, they're twisting the law. They're twisting the word. They're twisting things so that things will work out for their own purpose. He's telling them that the priests are selfish and greedy. He says, your leadership has fallen. That's why the people have fallen. Can I go there this morning? Uh, God holds leaders accountable for what they do and, and the people who are under them. And even Jesus himself criticized the leadership in his day. Can I back it up this morning? Uh, can I back it up this morning? Well, Matthew chapter 23, help me Holy Ghost. And verse number 28, the, the Bible says, even so, and this is Jesus talking. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous. Somebody say, appear, amen. Yeah, you appear righteous unto men. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy. Can I go there? And iniquity. It's bad when Jesus called you a hypocrite. God had spoken to his people and corrected them and disciplining them, yet they wouldn't listen. Judah wouldn't listen. Israel wouldn't listen. The northern kingdom wouldn't listen. The southern kingdom wouldn't listen because they were stubborn in their hearts. God told them, 
time after time and again, but they refused to listen to God until God finally told them, if you are hostile against me, I'll be hostile against you. Can I back that up this body? Can I go there this body? Uh, Leviticus chapter 26 and verses 23 to 24. Can I go there this morning? Well, the Bible says, if in spite of these things, you do not accept my correction, but continue to be hostile towards me, I myself will be hostile towards you. Uh, is that in your Bible? And will afflict you for your sin seven times. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you reap what you sow. How many of you know you reap what you sow this morning? Uh, can I go there this morning? Uh, I got to go to Jeremiah this morning. Jeremiah talked about the stiff neckness of God's people. The hard heartedness of God's people. The, the hard headedness of God's people. The, the waywardness of God's people. Uh, it's the same way in the United States today. There's a lot of hard headed folks. Can I go there this morning? Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse number 30. The, the Bible says, can I go there? Well, Sister Stetson said, you didn't give me that one, so let me read it anyhow. I got it here, Sister Stetson. Uh, she came up real quick. Give her a hand clap, y'all. <laughs> yeah, she didn't got good with that thing. Amen. Yeah, it's quicker than quick draw McGraw. Come on, somebody. Uh, the Bible said, in vain. Have I smitten your children? Mm. They got a whipping, but it was in vain. Can I go there? They received no correction. Somebody said no correction. No correction. Yeah, in other words, I whipped them, but they still didn't get corrected. <laughs> in vain have I smitten your children. They received no correction. Your own sword has devoured your prophets. Come on, somebody shout right there like a destroying lion. In other words, I sent the prophets to you, Reverend Haynes. Instead of you taking the word, you killed my prophets. Can I go there this morning? Oh, come on, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse number 3. Jeremiah knows that these people are just stiff-necked folks. Well, Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 3, the Bible says, O Lord, are not your eyes on the truth? You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. Well, how many know there's some hard-headed folks? Yeah, there's some hard-headed folks out there. Well, they have made their faces harder than rock. Well, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse number 23. Can I go there? Because you did give me that one. Come on, can I go there? Well, but they obey not. Somebody said they obey not. Uh, you know why? Because they were hard headed. Can I go there? Neither incline their ear. This is part I want you to hear right here. Come on, watch it now. But made their neck stiff. Somebody said stiff neck. <laughs> well, it's right there, isn't it? But they made their neck stiff that they might not hear. Well, they made the neck stiff because they didn't want to hear nor receive instruction. Doesn't that sound like the United States today? Uh, you tell folks they're doing something wrong. How many of folks will cuss you out today? Amen. How many of they'll cuss you real good? <laughs> yeah, you tell some of these folks what you're doing is wrong, you in for a fight <laughs> and a good licking and a good cussing. Amen. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Y'all know I'm telling the truth this morning. Can I go there? Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 33. Jeremiah 32 and 33. Well, the Bible says they turn their backs to me. I don't believe that. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? They turn their backs to me and not their faces. Mm. Though I taught them again and again. Somebody say again and again. 
That's weak. Say again and again. In other words, I, I've been teaching these folks. I, though I taught them again and again, they would not listen mm, or respond to discipline. Somebody said hard-headed. Yeah, God says they have not listened no matter that I taught them again and again. Beloved, but don't that sound like the United States of America? Uh, they're so stubborn. All these signs we're seeing today. But folks are still going on in their sins. Can I go there? How many know you're hearing of wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in different places? Am I right about it? How many know there's cold weather back east? <laughs> How many know there's cold weather in places where there wasn't cold weather before? Well, we're seeing the signs of the time. But Jesus said, you're still not listening. Uh, can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Well, Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse number 5. The Bible says, good God Almighty, the Lord within her is righteous. Somebody said, thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yeah, in the midst of all that sin, there still is a righteous God. How many of y'all know God is righteous this morning? Yeah, somebody shout right now. Amen. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. The Lord within her is righteous. <laughs> hallelujah. He does no wrong. Am I right about it? Somebody shout morning by morning. <laughs> Yes, morning by morning, he dispenses his justice. Am I right about it? Uh, and every new day, he does not fail. Uh, Jonathan, we ought to shout right there. It's that every new day, he does not fail. How many know that God does not fail? Somebody shout, God does not fail. God does not fail. He'll never fail you. There's a word for you this morning. He'll never fail you. He's never failed me yet. What you're going through, God won't fail you. Hallelujah. That's a word from Zephaniah. God will not fail you. If you got to go to court, God will not fail you. If you got to go to the doctor, God will not fail you. If you're going through surgery, God will not fail you. How many of you know this morning, God will not fail you? Hey, there's something in the word right there for us this morning. It says, yet the unrighteous know no shame. Uh, the unrighteous know no shame. We used to say in our day, there's no shame to their game. Amen. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? Uh, they do everything they're big enough to do. It says, even though the princes and the judges and the prophets and the priests were wicked. Zephaniah is saying, our God is still righteous. Our God won't fail you. Our God will keep you. Our God does not do wrong. Our God is a just God. Our God is a great God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an almighty God. Our God is a God who will never fail. Even though all this is going on in the United States, keep your eyes on God. Uh, God is still in control. How many know that God is still on the throne? How many know God still have the last say? How many know God has the only say? Yeah, in the midst of all that going on, God, uh, just for now, I said God is still righteous. And God is still in our midst. Uh, God cannot fail. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. God cannot fail. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. God cannot lie. Come on, give God a hand of praise right there. Yes, the people's conscious, Zephaniah says, has become callous. They become insensitive. And he says there's no shame to what they do. And, and folks, let me just say this with my heart. There's some stuff that's going on I know would not have gone on 30 years ago. Can I go there? Folks would have been too ashamed to do what they're doing today. How many know that you can drive down the street now and smell marijuana? 
Now, now, 30 years ago, maybe it's a, maybe go back further. 40 years ago, they hid the cigarette. They thought smoking a cigarette, you had to hide that in school, amen. But now, smoking marijuana, well, 30 years ago, they, they'd hide that. But now, you can walk around your own neighborhood and smell it. Isn't that a shame? But Zephaniah says they got to the point there's no shame to what they're doing. And then he says the reason why is because of the leaders. Can I go there? He said because of the priests, because of the prophet, because of the judges, because of the princes. He said they fail, so the folks fail with them. Can I go there this body? Can I go there this body? Our God expects us to learn from this, what has happened in the past. Can I go there this morning? Zephaniah chapter 3 and verses 6 and 7. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's getting good up here, y'all. Uh, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, I have cut off the nations. Does God have that kind of power? Says the Kim, does God have that kind of power? Says the Murray, does God have that kind of power? Uh, I have cut off the nations. Ooh, their, their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none passes by. Their cities are destroyed, Jonathan, so that there is no man. Does God have that kind of power? Can I ask you a question? If God did that in the past, can he do that today? Uh, if he did it in the past, will he do it today? Oh, uh, that there is none inhabitant. Can I go there? I said, surely. Because I did all that, because I did all that, and you knew I did all that. I said, surely thou will fear me. Thou will receive instruction because I did all that. So their dwelling should not be cut off. In other words, you saw me do all that in the past, so you're you going to fear me, and then you're going to do that because you don't want to be cut off like they were cut off. But somebody shout, however. Come on, shout, howsoever. I punished them, Reverend Haynes, but they rose early. early. Mm, 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 you got it, you got it. They got up early to sin. They didn't wait till the nighttime to sin. <laughs> they rose early to play like they did in Noah's day. Come on, somebody. Uh, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. They corrupted themselves. Uh, you know, in Genesis, it says, they did everything in the imagination of their hearts. How many know that mankind can be wicked? That's why God sent laws because men will do anything. And you think they've gone to the bottom now? They still gonna go a little bit lower. I ain't gonna go into it, but there's some yet things they haven't done yet, but they're on their way to it. Uh, you watch, one day somebody gonna be standing up there before the judge with them and their pet. We wanna get married. Tell your neighbor no shame to their game. Can I go there? God says and God warns through Zephaniah, through the man of God, that their minds are becoming reprobate and they have failed. He says, look to the sins of the past and see how I judge Sodom and Gomorrah. See how I judge during Noah's floods. See how I judge all those nations, the Hivites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the uh, Gergesites, and, and the Moabites, and Ammonites. All of them, they don't exist today. If I did that in the past, why won't I do it today? Hmm. Can I go a little further? He's telling his city, Jerusalem, you should, you should know better. I gave you so much. I gave you the law. I gave you the prophets. I gave you the priests. I gave you the temple. I gave you all these things. And now you're acting like the folks around you. How many know if you hang around bad folks long enough, you'll pick up some of their habits? 
You may not cuss, but if you, if you hear somebody cussing all the time, you stomp your toe. Well, come on, somebody. <laughs> you say, where did that come from? <laughs> Tell three names with the devil, amen. <laughs> we should learn as a nation from these other nations that God has demolished, that God has destroyed. It's all in the history books. God is telling Jerusalem, I'm disciplining you, not because I hate you. I'm disciplining you because I love you. How many of you spanked your children before? Take it off camera, y'all. Amen. <laughs> today they get you today. Amen. Yeah, I, I can put both my hands up. But you did it because, not because you hated them. You did it because you love them. Can I go there? You, you, you did it to protect them. Can I go there? You, you told them the stove was hot because you knew if they touched the stove, they burned themselves. Am I right about it? But there was something inside the nature of the child when he comes in this world. If you tell him not to touch the, the stove and he got the whole house to go to, he's sitting over there looking at the stove. How we know that's the sin nature? Amen. Looking at the tree, God tell you not to look at it. But then God says, I disciplined you because I loved you. And I love you. Can I back it up this body? Can I back it up this body? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 6. The, the Bible says, for whom the Lord loveth. Come on, somebody. Somebody say love. Yeah, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. In other words, he disciplines you not because he wants to destroy you. He disciplines you because he loves you. Because if you touch the hot stove, you burn yourself. Come on, somebody. If you do everything that you want to do, big enough to do, you'll only destroy yourself. Can I go there? Oh, y'all don't want to hear me this morning. Can I go there this morning? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges, watch it, every son whom he receiveth. How many of you are born again? Yeah. Sometimes God has to, to whip his own children. To whip them in line and, and get them to walk straight with him. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Oh neighbor. To whom much is given. Much is required. What is God saying through Zephaniah? Zephaniah is saying you have received a flood of light. A flood of revelation. A flood of inspiration. Therefore, you know better. Therefore, you should do better. Can I break it down? He says, Jerusalem, God has given you so much. God gave you the temple. God gave you the law. You saw the glory cloud. You saw the angel of the Lord. You were fed manna from heaven and you, were, you received quails blown on to you and you crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. And you crossed the Jordan River. You know, and I fed you and I gave you water out of rock when you were thirsty. And when the water was bitter, I put a tree in the water and made the water sweet for you. And I brought you from out of nowhere. And, and I put you in a land and I, and I elevated you. But, but look what you've done to me. To your neighbor, neighbor. To whom much is given. Much is required. This is a wake up call to Israel. But guess what? It's a wake up call to the United States too. Oh, uh, we better wake up. How many know we're seeing a lot of signs and wonders? Uh, we talk about COVID-19. Then we talk about uh, Delta. Then we talk about Omicron. Well, you wonder sometimes what's next. How many of y'all know God is trying to talk with us? Yeah. God sometimes will talk with his children. But the question is, are we listening? Come on, Reverend Haynes. Are we paying attention? I don't know about y'all, but I see a whole lot of things going on in the land. 
And I'm even hearing them saying some, some things like, we may have to live with variants. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? I know that we're getting a wake-up call. Uh, can I get a little closer here? God has given us warnings after warnings after warnings. Well, preacher, what should we do if we want to change? How many know that the change is not in the vaccine? <laughs> can I go there? The change is not in Dr. Fawcett. Uh, the change not in President Biden. Can I go there this morning? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you and I are the change agent. <laughs> yeah, if you want to change, it begins in the house of God. How many know, y'all know that you got some power this morning? Uh, can I go there this morning? You, you have power over COVID-19. Uh, you have power over Omicron. Can I go there this morning? You have power over Delta this morning. Can I go there this morning? You have power over any variant this morning. Uh, God said, call unto me and I answer. Y'all want to hear me this morning? Said, I'll show you great and mighty things. Can I go there this morning? He said, you have not because you ask not. Can I go there this morning? He says, ask and it shall be given. Am I right about it? He says, seek and ye shall find. Shall I go there? He says, knock and it shall be open unto you. How many of y'all believe that this morning? I heard my God say, open your mouth wide. He said, I'll feel it. Can I go there this morning? I heard my God say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Can I go there this morning? I heard my God said, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Am I right about it this morning? I heard my God say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can I go there this morning? I heard my God say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Can I go there this morning? Can I go there this morning? Well, I think our God deserves a hand of praise this morning. Am I right about it? Well, as I come on in here and get a little closer, uh, we see red lights. When red lights are flashing, uh, it tells me you ought to stop. Can I go there? Because if you keep on running red lights, you're going to crash after a while. Am I right about it? Uh, when you come to the train track and the cross is down and the red lights are flashing, that tells you you ought to stop. But if you keep on running anyhow, how do you know there's going to be a train that's going to come after a while? Am I right about it? Well, God is giving us sign after sign and warnings after warnings. Am I right about it? It's best that we heed the warnings. It's best that we keep our ear in Christ. Am I right about it? Well, as I get ready to land my plane, well, God is saying that we as a nation got to pay attention to him. We got to look to the Lord and the Lord alone. How many know that God has all our solutions, all our answer, all our help? How many know all our help comes from the Lord? Come on, give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. As I come to a close in this day that we are living in, we're seeing the signs of the time. We're seeing the handwriting on the wall. We're hearing of walls and ruins of wars. We're hearing of earthquakes in diverse places. Mm. We see men do everything they're big enough to do. The Bible says men shall be lovers of themselves, boastful, high-minded, treacherous. These are perilous times. But God through Zephaniah is telling Jerusalem 
telling the capital, telling the people, telling the nation, look what I did in the past. If I did that in the past, why won't I do this in the future? How many know there's a great tribulation coming? How many know there's a day of the Lord coming? How many know that every man must appear before the judgment seat of Christ? And give it an account for everything that's done in this body. One day we all must stand before Christ and Christ alone and, and give an account for the things that God has given us. Oh God has given us so much like he's given Israel. He gave Israel the temple, the tabernacle, the, the law, the prophets, the, the promises and all of that, the patriarchs. But he's given us a lot too. He's given us grace. He's given us gifts. He's given us talents. Can I go there? He filled us with the Holy Spirit. Can I go there? He washed us in his blood. Can I go there? He calls us the children of God. Children of the King. Can I go there? He said, you're a chosen generation. Come on, somebody. You're a royal priesthood. Can I go there? Say, so you're a holy nation. Say, so you're a peculiar people. Can I go there? He said, I called you out of darkness. Hallelujah. Into my marvelous light. Can I go there? I made you an heir and join heir with Christ. Watch it now. Say, so I'm coming back for a church, he said. Without spot, without wrinkle. Can I go there? He said, occupy till I come. He said, when I come back, I have my rewards with me. When you stand before your God, are you going to be able to say, Lord, here are the fruits of my labor. Can I go there? To whom much is given, much is required. He's going to ask you, how many souls are in the kingdom because of you? How many souls are saved? How many bedsides did you go to and pray for? How many sick folks did you go and pray for? Can I go there? How many jails did you go to? How many prisons did you go to? How many hungry folks did you feed? How many thirsty folks did you give water? Oh, you give a, you'll get a prophet's reward if you give a prophet water. Can I go there? To whom much is given, much is required. Some given five talents, some get two, some given one, but everybody is given something. When you meet your master, are you going to be able to say, all these souls came to Christ because of what you gave me? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, to whom much is given, much is required. Well, Sister Stinson, I want to land on that plane of Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Y'all stand on your feet. I want to end right here, and I want to, Dr. Jackson, I want to put this in their spirit. Mm -hmm. God has me to put this in their spirit this morning. All these prophets, Amos, Hosea, Micah, hmm, Haggai, Habakkuk, yes, yes. Zephaniah, Zechariah, Joel, <laughs> Hosea. They all got a message for us. This one says, you've been given much. I want y'all to hear me this, speaking through the Holy Spirit. You've been given much. But what have you done with what he's given you. When you go before him, he's going to ask you, what have you done with the talent I gave you? The grace I gave you. The gifts I gave you. You want to be able to say, well, you know, Lord, all these souls have gone to heaven. 
are here because I witnessed your name. I heard your word, but I didn't keep it in. I gave it out, and these have come. You gave me five talents. Here's now ten. You gave me two. Here's now four. You don't want to say you gave me one, and I buried it. <laughs> Worse than that, you don't want to say all these folks have gone to hell because of me. <clears throat> That's the worst thing to say. Let us read this last together. This is Dr. J. Vernon McGee and how he says what God did in the past he could do in our future now. He judged in the past. Folks don't like to hear about this but this is the word of God. What he did in the past he can do today. Let us read this together and we'll land our plane. I count to three. Let's read together. One, two, three, together. It has been privileged to walk through the ruins of great civilizations of the past. Recently, I walked through the ruins of Ostia, the playground of the Romans. It is just 15 miles from Rome but not very well known. It will become well known later as Rome is developing it and it will become a tourist attraction. Ostia was where Rome lived it up. It was the Las Vegas of the Rome Empire. As you stand in the ruins of that city and see the stones of the Romans road which were worn by chariot wheels. It is difficult to think that those streets were once crowded and that that city was a great city in its heyday. God says here, I'm gonna make them desolate. It's very difficult to believe that Los Angeles could become that desolate, but it could. It is difficult to believe that New York could become desolate, but it could. Tell your neighbor, but it could. Beloved, that's the word of the Lord for God's people from Zephaniah, the prophet. Three things I want to present to you on this morning. That's the word of the Lord. The food, the spiritual food for God's people. Three things I want to put before you. Three things. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, just wave your hand to me if you have not received Jesus. Just wave your hand. If you have not received Jesus, wave your hand. Being that no one waved, you all know Jesus. When does my heart good. Hallelujah. I, I rejoice in that. For when we one day go up in glory, we'll see each other. We all will be there together because we all believe in Jesus. Second thing, is there anybody out here who does not have a church family, church home, and you want to join Emmanuel Temple Church and become part of Emmanuel Temple family? You want to become a member here? Wave your hand like this. All right, everybody's a member of a church. Third thing, anybody need special prayer on this morning? Okay, I see your hands. I'll pray for you right where you are. And beloved, I want you to hear me in my spirit because I'm, I'm feeling the, the radiant of the spirit of the living God. God loves you. God wants the best for you. I read every morning Abraham and I see how God blessed his life and when I see that I want that for you all and I want it for myself and I read the highlights of Abraham's life and I want to pray for you this morning that God will bless your life one thing that 
God said in that word about him, he blessed Abraham in all things. Not some things, but all things. I want you to be blessed in all things. In every way God can be blessed. I want him to bless you. And he told Abraham, I'll make a great nation out of you. I'll make your name great. I'm going to make you be a blessing. So I'm going to bless you. And then I'm going to take care of you. Anybody who bless you, I'm going to bless them. Anybody, 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 anybody? Mm, come on, come on, Holy Spirit. Anybody who curse you, I'm going to curse them. I'm about to land this plane, but the Holy Ghost gave me a revelation, sister, right here. Estella Ray. I has got a revelation right here. How many of you heard about that hostage situation yesterday? Yeah, you heard about it. Now watch this part. I hope y'all discern this. Now watch this. Now this is why I was listening. Those were children of Abraham. Those were children of Abraham. Now watch this. Now I was checking it real close. You know what they said? They, they were very careful in how they said it. Reverend Haynes, they said, uh, the ambassador of Israel is, uh, is listening, is paying attention. Then later on, they said, some of the major organizations, they're listening. I keep checking it out. Then they said, President Biden said he's listening. Now watch it, watch it, watch it. Then they said, over in Israel, the president of Israel is listening to what's going on down there. Then I said, ah, the promises of God. 4,000 plus years ago, God told a man, I'm going to take care of you and your descendants. Kim the word of the Lord is true. Just, just open the book. It's alive today. You want God to talk to you? Just open your Bible. And it's simple. It's simple. Say, Lord, just talk to me. Slowly he'll talk. And he'll talk more and more. And I laugh to myself. I say, yeah. Y'all don't understand. They don't even understand. Them, them down there, they don't understand that God made a promise to a man that I'm going to take care of your descendants. Can I go there? I even told LeGrand, I said, LeGrand, you, you're good like you are, not because of you, but because of your grandfather. <laughs> your grandfather was a preacher with 19 children. And I know a preacher, how he prays. He prays for his children. Come here, preacher girl. <laughs> That's why y'all here. That's why he here. <laughs> I know how to preach and pray. You know how to preach and pray for his children? He said, when I'm gone off the scene, you yet abide faithful to my children, my grandchildren. My grand I'll be faithful to you, but you take care of my house. I'll take care of your house, but please, you take care of my house. I said, Grant, that's why y'all are doing good, because a long time ago, your grandfather prayed those prayers. Now the Spirit done spoke y'all. Wave your hand. I got to pray for y'all. You yet abide faithful. You saw the hand that raised up. You abide faithful. Like you're faithful to Abraham. And we see your faithfulness today. They, they, they raise their hands, Lord. Be faithful to them. Their husband, their wives, their children, their grandchildren. Their great grandchildren, their uncle, their aunt, their mother, their father, their niece, their nephew, even the dog, the, the carrot, canary, anything belong to them. Bless them with all things, Lord. They wave their hand for specific need, Lord. He said, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You're faithful to a thousand generations. 5,000 years ago. Here you are still keeping your word. You're going to keep it to them too, Lord. If they call on me, I'll answer. I'll show you great and mighty things that you, you know now. You have not because you ask now. Open your mouth wide and I'll fill it this morning.
I'll bless you this morning. I'll bless you going in. I'll bless you coming out. I'll bless your bread. I'll bless your water. Good God Almighty. Bless them, Lord. Keep them, Lord. Down through the generation. You kept Abraham's children. <laughs> I know you keep these children of faith adopted by the covenant. Bless them. Keep them. Guide them. Healthy and strong. Keep your angels all about them. May 2022 be a blessed year for them. And what they came here asking for, may they go home with it. Hallelujah. Thank you now, Lord. To you be all the praises, all the glory, all the honor, all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' holy name we pray. We say amen. Can y'all give God a shout of praise this morning? Can y'all shout this morning? Hallelujah. And that's your benediction too. And God bless y'all.